At the age of 17, Zadgin said that he was all in with doing real estate investing. His dad said, I'm not helping you a little bit, even though he had been doing it for a long time. And Zach still made six figures in REI in his very first year. You're going to find out how on the Fearless Flipping Podcast. Make sure that if you're on the YouTube channel that you like, subscribe, and comment on this video. If you want financial freedom, time freedom, and want to leave a legacy for generations to come, you probably have heard real estate investing is the place to do that. But how do you get started? What do you have to do? When's the right time? If you are looking for those answers, you've come to the right place. My name is Kyle Stanley, and this is Fearless Flipping. My mission is to help you learn this business and conquer real estate investing. Welcome into the show. You're watching with me, Kyle Stanley on the Fearless Flipping Podcast, and I am so excited for the story that you're about to hear today. Zach is with Flip with Rick. His dad is Flip with Rick, and they are a team combo. Basically, Zach does all the acquisitions and the wholesaling and wholetailing side of the business, while Rick is big into education and helping other people get to their goals with real estate investing. Zach saw his dad helping people at the age of 17, asked his dad for help. His dad said, if you want it bad enough, you're going to go out and do it on your own. And that's exactly what Zach did and found out how to do it. And he's teaching you here on the podcast exactly how he went out and found a way to succeed and do it while going through high school, while going through college. And now the kid is still 20 years old and has made six figures in every year of real estate investing. So let's go ahead and jump into it with Zach Ginn here on the Fearless Flipping Podcast. Hey guys, welcome into the show. Today's episode, once again, is brought to you by our Airbnb Profit Calculator. We all know that you're a savvy investor. You love making money in your sleep, but you also wish you were able to make more than $200 per door, right? Well, what if you could? In fact, what if you could bring in over $1,000 per door or more? Uh, yeah, that's Airbnb and that's what I'm doing. That's pretty much my averages on each one of my properties. And all you have to do is go to fearlessflipping.com and download our Airbnb profit calculator for absolutely free. Start evaluating your properties, see what you could potentially make in your area. Once again, go to fearlessflipping.com to get this free, absolutely free Airbnb calculator right now. And we have got Zach Ginn on the phone. Well, I guess this isn't a phone. This is a, <laughs> our podcast. And Zach is the guy that I wish I was uh, when I was 20 years old. Yes, that's right. He's 20 years old. He's been doing air or not. See, I'm not even, I'm so like focused on Airbnb right now, Zach. I can't even say it right. He's been doing real estate investing for four years. Um, and even since year one has been making six figures, like this is the dream right here of most people that are getting into real estate saying, man, I wish I could tell myself when I was 16, 17 years old, what this, this whole business was all about. And here you are doing it. Uh, excited to have you on the show. Zach, thanks for being here. No problem. It's actually three and a half years right now, about to hit four in about six months. Hey, you know, technicalities, I, the way I look at it, you're a success. That's the way I see it. But uh, <laughs> perfect. Zach, you asked me, by the way, guys, uh, we just got done with an interview on Zach's episode too. And Zach asked me a question that I always ask my guests. And so I'm sure, Zach, if you're asking this question to your guests, you probably are prepared for this one. What is your craziest or most interesting real estate investing deal? Oh boy. Okay. So just to give you a quick synopsis here of what this deal is, because I don't know if you guys are really into the Airbnbs, but this is what it is. So basically we did a wholesale deal. So just a background for this for you. So basically what we do is we buy the property and we put it back on the market in about two weeks and we put like a grand into it and we make about 35 to 50,000 spread on it. Very nice. Wow. So basically we buy the, I buy the house with a motivated seller in it. And his motivation here is he is going to jail in a month. Oh boy. <laughs> and That's motivating. he has the house free and clear, but obviously he's going away for about 10 years. So, you know, he won't be able to, uh, the, he, he won't have the house. So, uh, and you know, he's in denial. He thinks he's going to beat the case and he doesn't beat the case. And the, basically the way the justice system works is he doesn't have too much time left. And I talked to him frantically. He decides he needs to sell the property. Another background with him is he was on his 10th DUI. Oh so my gosh. They give you a lot of chances in Florida. So unfortunately, to go to jail for 10 years for a DUI, you have to do a lot of DUIs. So he's an alcoholic. You know, it's a terrible situation, but I'm here to help him out. So the house has a leaky roof, the fence is all torn up, there's code violations up the wazoo. There's a lot of problems with this house. 
So I basically agree with him that he's got to move out on the first and he's going to jail him up two weeks after. So he's got a place to stay. And I tell him you need to get everything out of the house that, that you want. Cause all his valuables were there. And I'm like, they, I can't have anything. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want you coming back in. And so basically I give him a week to, to leave and then we close on that day. So I go there before the closing and I go to the property just before we close on it. And he's in the garage with a bed and everything. And I said, John, you're supposed to move out. He's like, I did move out of the house. I'm in the garage. Oh no. And he was living out of the garage. And basically that was a uh, mess. And long story short, he packed everything up and he drove away with his truck, which he was not supposed to do. And uh, basically that was the last time I saw him. And he's probably in jail right now, but we made a lot of money on that. <laughs> wow. Okay. That's a new one. I've, I've heard some different stories, but uh, sleeping in the garage and on um, his way to jail is that's a new one. <laughs> Crazy. But Hey, it, you, you really did help out the guy, whether or not it, that was the ideal situation for him, you got the house sold. And, and like you said, you turned around and made a profit. So that's awesome, Zach. Well, Hey, uh, let, let's go ahead and share with the audience exactly your story. Uh, you just shared it with me a little bit ago and I'm like bug eyed. Uh, because it it really is like, you know, you talk about someone who is achieving things at a young age, and that's exactly what Zach is doing. Um, take us back to like when you first decided that you were going to get into real estate and where you're at tonight, today. Perfect. So I'm Zach in. I'm with Flip with Rick. We're in a real estate education company. We help people all over to make money and financial freedom with real estate investing. Same thing with what Kyle's doing here. So let's give you a background here. So my dad is Ritkin. I don't know if you've heard of him before, but he actually has been a real estate investor for the past 16 to 17 years, depending on when this releases. And he started out in about early 2000s in real estate investing. He's made a name for himself, created probably the top real estate investing company when it comes to wholesaling in our market on the Treasure Coast. And basically he's been making a lot of money and when I was a kid in my teens, you know, high school, middle school, I've always seen him. He was always around with me. He was, I mean, he had all this time and he was making great money in real estate investing. And I always wanted to do that, but I didn't know how or what to do. And I didn't really care. I was a high school wrestler. That was my passion at the time. And I was pretty good team captain. Uh, I did very good all area. And that was all I was focused on was that sport. And uh, when it came to being 17 years old, 16 and a half, I started realizing that wrestling, you can only go to the Olympics and you don't make too much money from it. So, and I was looking for colleges and I figured out that I had no money and I needed to get a job. So I realized I needed to get some money. So I was working as a bag boy back then since I was 14 for about four, about three years. And I was scrubbing toilets and just bagging groceries all day at a certain grocery store in Florida, if you know where that is. But um, unfortunately, I was scrubbing toilets and just bagging, and I hated my life. And not hating it, but I hated working there. And I had an epiphany that one day my manager made me uh, scrub some feces off the toilet once. And, and I basically told myself, I'm never doing this again, and I'm never working minimum wage again. So I saw a check on my dad's desk, of a wholesale check, he made about 30,000 from just one deal. He made that in about two hours with the work. Wow. And I'm like, I better, I better learn how to do this. So I went to him, I said, hey, hey dad, can you teach me how to do this so I can get rich quick just like you? And long story short, he basically said this, like, no, I'm not gonna do that. The best way to learn it is if you do it yourself. And honestly, if you want it bad enough, uh, you're gonna do it. So wow. I was stuck there, I didn't know what, I didn't know what to do. Tough so love. it was tough love, but it definitely helped me from where I was now. So I went into his library, uh, his office, and I grabbed about 20 real estate investing books off that shelf. And I started reading about an hour every single night of real estate investing after school, wrestling practice. And I learned that I didn't have many options. So you could either do bandit signs, you can do direct mail, try to find motivated sellers. And what I was reading there was just a lot of things. So basically wholesaling is just the art of finding a motivated seller, putting that under contract, and then finding a buyer 
and making a spread on the difference yep. between that. So I learned that I had no money and I, there's nothing much I could do. So I figured out the best way for me was to stick bandit signs out and try to find a deal. So I went to and my so re really quick. I, I just want people to know, like, you know, you're, you're a college student. That's not, or at this point, a high school kid 17. that's not making, yeah, not making much money, if anything at all. So bandit signs, how much were those costing you and how were you getting that money? So back then they were $2 a sign and I had about 300 bucks in my bank account. Mm. So entrepreneur wise, I spent about 250 bucks, I had wow. $50 in the bank account and I went all out. So I wrote them with my personal phone number, went on my, I was, I was making some money, but I had a car. So that's where all my money was going. So I was making maybe what, one to $200 a week at the bad boy job, but just, it wasn't covering the bills. Mm. and you know some tough love so basically i put the bandit signs out after my wrestling tournaments in the area and i started getting a call and most guys you listen to they get their first deal after six months uh i hate to say this this seems cliche but after about two weeks I got my first deal wow and i basically made about twenty five thousand from that deal eventually i started getting better and better reinvesting money and I'm before, when I graduated high school, made about six figures already. And uh, long story short, that was how I got started in real estate investing in high school. I got a full ride scholarship to the University of Florida. And the only thing I learned from there was the love college football. So I eventually started cold calling out of my dorm there. And my uh, uh, my buddies in the dorm weren't pretty happy with it because I was of cold course. calling three hours a day. And basically what I was doing was skip tracing. I had VAs do it for me, but they were, they sucked and I had a struggle building systems. So I was making six figures doing virtual real estate investing out of my dorm. And I figured out I could actually start taking my classes online at the university, went back home, started doing deals with Rick. And eventually right now we run the biggest wholesaling operation in the treasure coast. Wow. Okay, so many takeaways there. First of all, congratulations on your success at a young age. And, you know, just so get what you said there, yes, you got your first deal after two weeks, not a very common thing. But let's break down that first deal. First question is, why do you think you got that deal so quickly? And then kind of give us the, uh, the numbers and the situation there. Yeah, so... If you remember it. I, I know, I... I, I, it's, it's the first deal you always get. You're going to remember this just yeah. like anything. It's like the back of my hand. I remember all the numbers and everything. It's, it's, it's crazy. So this was actually a man that called me from the bandit sign. And the only reason I got the deal was because he was the first person that called me and I was literally at his house in about 20 minutes. Nice. So if, I, if he went to another slick salesman, they would have just destroyed me. I mean, 17 year old kid, super scared, red face. I was like, Oh, what a, and it terrible squeaky voice. I was so nervous, sweating everywhere. If you get, if you get a guy like you going there, I would have got destroyed. So, I mean, honestly, if that deal happened now, I'd probably make $60,000, I would say, but I made 20 and that's cause I wasn't going to take it. Yeah. I, so the way I did it was I actually got the thing under contract for about 90 K. I no, no, we sold it for 90 K actually was under contract for about 65, I remember. So basically what I knew was you don't say the numbers first. And I remember I was like, I'm gonna make like five grand from this deal. So I'm gonna offer him $85,000. That's where I remember. And then I go watch like a, let me know what, there's some YouTube guy, some, some YouTube guru, real estate guy was listening. He said, don't say the number first. And I said, okay. So I was thinking, I was like 80 is the number I make 10 grand on. So mm -hmm. I go, I say, what do you want to sell the property? Cause I terrible, terrible. I never say one, but I said, what do you want to sell the property for? And he's like 70. And I started trembling inside cause I knew that was a big deal. Right. And I, I said, well, could you do 60? We met in the middle 65. Uh, eventually we made about 25 K on that property, found a buyer uh, off Craigslist. You can't do that anymore, but I feel like an old timer you're saying this, but you can't do Craigslist anymore. But I found a buyer from there, eventually made some money there got some more bandit signs and uh, the rest is history. Why, why do you say you can't do it on Craigslist anymore? Craigslist, because every single buyer on Craigslist is a wholesaler. Mm, okay. 
Okay. It's I, impossible. Got it. In my market. Yeah. I was going to say maybe, maybe in your market, because we do have a lot of fip, fix and flippers here in town that uh, use Craigslist as a way to find their fix and flips. So um, another good reason why you need to understand your market. That that's awesome. You said today you feel like you could make 60 on that. What would be different if you could go back to that first deal and tell yourself, give yourself some advice going into it to be able to make more? What would you tell yourself? 100%. You know this for a fact. It's rapport. Obviously, it's just the, the key. The number one reason why I get such great deals is rapport. I spend 30, 45 minutes just talking to the guy using the form model or the Ford model, whichever you guys want. You know, basically I go around the property. I'm a 20 year old kid. So it's a lot harder for me to build rapport with a 50 year old man than it is for a 50 year old man to build rapport. So I have to really, I have to work three times as hard on an appointment, but the number one thing I sell on appointments is rapport and confidence. That is something nobody can beat me at. Mm. So it's, it's as simple as just going around the house, seeing pictures of someone's family and says, who is this? go in a story, see fishing holes, things like that. It's just, I, I can talk for hours with sellers about fishing. So uh, it, it's a great rapport builder. That's awesome. So um, I think there's one thing that you said there that most people would say, I'm 20 years old, so I can't build rapport. And you said, I'm 20 years old, so I have to work three times as hard to build rapport. I think that is one of the most like, inspiring things that anyone your age could hear right now is that it's not a brick wall. It's just a bump in the road and you can overcome these obstacles with confidence and rapport. Where was there at any point in your beginning journey? I mean, you got your first deal in two weeks, so you know, you didn't go through a whole lot of adversity, but at the same time, did you ever have those voices in the back of your head saying, I'm too young. I, I won't be able to do this. You know, I, Definitely that was there, but the thing was, I, I don't know if you heard the story about people burning their, uh, burning the ships. I basically had no other money, yeah. so I, I didn't have any other options. And I think that really helped me out. Maybe if I had 10 K in the bank, things would have been a lot more different, obviously. But, um, I have to say, I'm not the one who paved the path of 17 year old kids making great money in real estate investing. The actual, the first guy I've seen at my young age before me doing this was Jalen White. He's actually in California right now too. He started for 17, made great money there. So I knew it worked for young guys. I've actually seen plans like, like that. So obviously with my dad too, I, I've seen it's work there, but basically it was, I burned the ship. That's good. That's really good. I, uh, Matt Garabedian lives in our town. I don't know if you've heard of Matt. He's a big time wholesaler, uh, but he said the same thing to me, you know, and this was when I was getting started in real estate. I had that comfortable you know, nine to five sales job that was paying me, you know, sixty, seventy thousand dollars a year, which it's like, okay, you don't want to leave that because that's your comfort. And then in, he just said, you got to burn the bridges. There has to be no plan B. And that it, literally a month later, I quit my, my full-time job. Cause I was like, you know, I've already got a deal under my belt. What could I do with more time? Um, and I guess that's a good question too, is you are at the time that you decide you're going to do this 17 years old, doing wrestling and school from, you know, whatever, eight to three, probably, and then wrestling from three to five. And then, you know, you still got to go home and have dinner with the family and everything. Where in the world were you finding time to take calls, to put up bandit signs, to go have meetings with sellers? This seems, I mean, for me, I know I played high school baseball. Like, I don't know where there would have been time. Yeah. So, uh, another funny story is I, I hate to call myself an overachiever, but I actually, so I went to a charter school basically. So this means by the time I was 16, I was taking, uh, college classes. So I had a college schedule the last two years of high school. So I had a lot more free time than the average high schooler, okay, which cool. means I, cl I class like three hours a day for their college classes. So unfortunately I made some sacrifices. I've gotten I would love to say this in every single college class I, lecture I've been in, I've been kicked out at least twice every semester for answering bandit sign calls. <laughs> of course. <laughs> that, so, uh, you know, that's awesome. So it's not like high school where they can actually like get you in big trouble for just answering calls. It's college. So they just kick you out. It's okay. Answer the bandit sign call, go back in. It's fine. That's amazing. Um, yet you still have your degree and you did it by what, 19 or 20 years old. Uh, it was 19. 
That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, overachiever is the right way to put it, <laughs> but at the same time, like just amazing what you've been able to accomplish, Zach. So um, what were your friends saying? You know, 17 year old who's like probably having to sacrifice a social life. If I'm, if I'm evaluating this correctly, what were your friends saying about what you were getting into? So this was in high school. My social life was pretty good still. I mean, I was, all my friends were doing high school wrestling, so that's what I was doing. So it, it was, it was easy doing that in college. I, I was only working like four hours a day. So I was just cold calling four hours and hanging out, having a good time in college the rest of the time. So that's fine. Now it's a lot more balanced. I probably work nine to 10 hours a day. So I still got plenty of time to work out and hang out with friends. So I've always had that social life. You know, I feel like the social life really got constrained when I came back from school and I was still taking college classes and working. So that was a crazy schedule for me, you know, seven to five, five to 10, basically Sundays I could hang out with friends and just relax. But for that six month period where I was home, doing deals and taking college classes, it was a little insane. Yeah. So again, just kind of going back to my question there though, like you had the social life. I'm almost sure that none of your friends were making six figures. So <laughs> were any of them like, yeah. I, I would be like stars in my eyes, like hanging out with you and being like, dude, teach me. But at the same time, there's not many people that are teenagers that are probably money hungry they're probably wanting to go and, and have a good time and party and stuff in college but what yeah. were your friends saying so i've been blessed pretty much in my life with some great friends so Sweet. i actually have a buddy he's actually he went to the same high school as me he did the whole college thing same thing with me he went the other path he did the it's really cringy sometimes you think of the amazon the uh what is it drop shipping the shopify sure. the marketing he's done that he makes six figures he's been doing this since high school too Wow. We just went different paths in entrepreneurship. So he's a really good friend. He's actually traveling the world now and doing what he does. So he was the one entrepreneur, entrepreneurship type friend I had to, you know, talk about things that were tough with him, but he's a grinder. All my other friends, you know, I, I was making six figures. Like I just, I didn't really, I didn't brag about it. Like no one really knew what I was doing. And I, I kept it on the down low. Like I don't want, like I'm not a braggy guy. I don't wear Gucci everywhere. I don't drive a sports car. But uh, basically, I just, I keep things pretty chill and down low. I mean, my friends know I make really good money. And they only knew that ever since I started posting checks on YouTube and helping other people. But uh, yeah, they're, they're not really starry eyed at all. They, they've known me for decades. So, you know, it's, it's pretty fun though. That's good. That's good. I, I'm glad to hear that you had that support system rather than people trying to, you know, if you've ever heard the uh, crabs in a bucket metaphor. Uh, people trying to tear you down, breaking your legs so that you can be down at their level. But that's great that yep. you had that support system that was bringing you up. Um, talk a little bit about your business model today with your dad. What's it like working with your dad? Um, how do you guys run the business and who has what responsibilities? Just kind of, I'd love to hear the the breakdown of that. Okay. So Rick's at a pretty unique position now where I actually, I've done so many deals now that I run the whole operation side. So I do the marketing acquisitions to like, I basically, he doesn't touch the deals. I just show him like, Hey, we need 50 K this week. Okay, cool. Like he doesn't care about that. Like that, that's the part that I just do on my own. And then he's almost exclusively focused now on the university side, uh, flip with work.com flip with work, YouTube. He's just educating our students, helping them become better. And his time's a lot better spent that doing that than me, than him going on appointments. And I actually help him with the media. I actually help the students half the time. So it, it's a really cool balance, but I'm basically the guy doing the deals and showing you the checks, showing we're still doing it, we're still doing great. And he's the one actually showing you and implementing the systems. That's awesome. Well, uh, I think that's a good time for us to bring up the education and university system that you have with helping out students. Um, what does that look like? What are people doing in your educational system? So we try to model them the same way that we do it. We're not really flashy. I know you guys see gurus out there with crazy cold calling centers spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on payroll. And it, it, it's, it's insane. So that it's modeled after our business. So we do about 90% wholesales, 10% wholesales now. And that's because we actually have funds now to make more money. So for example, um, it, we actually help you bring wholesale deals if you're starting out or scaling up. So 
if you want to join the university or, or buy any of our products, we personally help you out make making money in real estate. So the university is personally tailored for every single investor. So if you just started and you want help personally with me and Rick, we actually help you mentor you and bring you up. We, we have about probably 10 to, 10 to 20 of the, those that we actually personally do one-on-one and, and we have others that we do on just more of a consulting basis. But if you really want to get started in real estate investing, I honestly recommend you check out Kyle's stuff and check our stuff on YouTube and just get a taste. And once you get a deal or two and you really want to start scaling up, scaling up, make the money on the wholesaling, make quick 50 to 100K in about six months, and then use that money to buy Airbnbs and use Kyle's system. Oh, well, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that, Zach. Well, uh, and I just want to make sure people understand too uh, that, you know, that's, that's a business model that actually I haven't heard a lot of. Most of the time, it's just wholesaling. So people understand the difference. Wholesaling is just assigning a contract versus wholesaling. You're putting a, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand into it to kind of brighten up the price, place a little bit and get a great return. It's, it's basically a, a mini flip or just a um, kind of like wholesale on steroids, it, to put it that way. But why do you guys do that? Is there a reason that you're 90 10 on that rather than like 50 50? completely it's our market 100 percent. so the cool part is for most of our students that i mean our most successful ones so <laughs> they start out basically they have a full-time job and they're trying to have they're trying to get some success in real estate and they paid us and they want success and what we do is we make them exclusively wholesale and so they make about what their salary is so if the guy's making 80k a year and he's figuring out he can do wholesaling part-time and he's making 80k on that he can start learning and he's at a decision now where he can actually leave his job and start going to wholesaling. And then you get six figures there. And then once you get six figures, you got some money in the bank, you can start taking some deals down. So for example, on the average wholesale deal we get is about 25,000 and our average wholesale, wholesale is 45. And that's the same property. Got it. So oh. basically it's the level of buyers. That's basically it for wholesaling. So you, you know, in wholesaling, there's actually buyers. So you have the one buyer that will pay you the, the least amount, but you'll make mm -hmm. money. And then you got the guys who watch HGTV and went to a fan Merrill event and they want to start fixing flipping instantly and they'll pay you the most. And they usually make very slim margins, but we get most of the money. And uh, so that's that's wholesaling wise then wholesaling is the people actually living in a house and they'll pay more than any of those fix and flippers and that's why we make better profit on yep absolutely and, and i don't know if you see this this way and we'll kind of wrap up with this but um do you see with especially the the talk of you know another 2008 2007 2008 maybe the talk of especially like coronavirus and everything going on right now um there's been you know a little bit of a uh, us scene here at least in our market a lot of consumers starting to get a little bit scared. Um, do you see because of that, that business model changing for you a little bit if consumers are going to be um, conserving more than spending? Rick has almost made more money during a recession than he is during now. This is because we, he literally went so crazy in the short sales that we had, we were the only person in our market doing short sales and nobody knew what they were. And, we were doing so good in a recession. So if a recession happened, we would definitely switch up the business model to what we were doing previously. Mm -hmm. So it'd be a lot of creative financing, lease options subject to, and a ton, a ton, a ton of short sales. And yeah. a lot of people don't understand this, but during a down market, you can still make money wholesaling. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, there's, that's what's great about real estate. And I think that's what more people are prepared for now here versus in 2008. It seems to me that a lot of people lost their shirts in 2008 because they just weren't ready for it. And the very few that were really capitalized. And it seems like a lot of people have learned since then and are ready for another 2008. Um, you know, obviously you, you don't like to see other people getting hurt by it, but when, when you can take advantage of it and be prepared and ready to be able to have something like that, um, it seems to me like there's more people that are ready for that. So excited to hear that you guys are putting some things into place ready for that time. Uh, but before we kind of log off here, Zach, I want to know how can people connect with you and Rick and uh, any last words that you want to share with our audience? Definitely. So 
check us out on flipwithrick.com at flipwithrick. Just search flipwithrick anywhere. We're, we're going to be there except for maybe Twitter, but uh, check us out there. We just want to help people get started in real estate investing and wholesaling and wholetailing. So basically what I want you to do is get your first deal off of our YouTube. That's as much value that we put in there to help you get deals from the YouTube. So check it out and obviously use that money to get some great Airbnbs. Uh, but to answer your question on a final thoughts is I have to say this. If you are under the age of 30, there's no reason why you shouldn't be doing real estate. Mm -hmm. Don't let your age become a factor. It is not a factor. The number one thing you can sell in an appointment is confidence. And if you have the confidence that you're going to get a deal, even if you don't know a thing about real estate, that's how I got my first deal. I didn't even know. I didn't know how real estate construction worked. I didn't know what structures were. I didn't know anything. But I made money doing it, and I've proven if I could do it, you obviously can do it too. So I really hope you guys check us out and see my journey as growing too as an entrepreneur. Awesome, Zach. Flipperthrick.com. That's where you guys are going to go. We'll also have it on our show notes here, and we'll direct you to that right after uh, we say goodbye. Thank you so much, Zach, for helping our audience to conquer real estate investing. Show notes for this one, fieldsflipping.com forward slash Zach Ginn, that's Z-A-C-H-G-I-N-N. -N, and you can find out all of the information on Flip With Rick. You can find out more about wholetailing and their whole process um, along with their university and how they're helping out students. Uh, and again, just you know, get inspired by this. And Zach mentioned something at the end there. He said, if you're under 30, it's, you're not too young. And I would say if you're over 30, it's not too late. Like You can still get in and start this even if you are 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, heck, 80 years old. Like You can still be a part of something like this as long as you have the confidence to build rapport, help other people, and find the deals. That's all it really takes. That's going to be it here on the Fearless Flipping Podcast. Thanks for joining us in conquering real estate investing.